Hi, my name is Matt. I'm here to do some rescue testing stuff with Ryan and the crew. Today, we're gonna to be testing whether a Purcell Prusik in an ascender system load limits enough to keep an ascender from desheathing the rope with a factor one fall. Oh, yes, good job, buddy. Why would you have a factor anything on an ascender? So as you're climbing up, you're gonna encounter obstacles, whether there's knots where two ropes are tied into themselves, um, or just an edge. And so as you're ascending, depending on the ascending setup you have, at some point you're gonna likely have to take one ascender off, move it past the obstacle. When you do that, you have the potential to have a shock load onto your system. Um, there's ways to mitigate it and you should employ those, but worst case scenario is what I wanna test. And what's the theory you've been taught about the Purcells? So the idea is that having a fully collapsed Purcell between you and your ascender means that if I had slack in my system and I were to fall onto this, as opposed to a static fixed length lanyard, that Purcell should slip a little bit, hopefully reducing the energy enough that the teeth on the cam do not desheat the rope. I've never actually tested it until today. So in my few tests I've done, uh, I've experienced that teeth can desheat the rope as, as low as 2 kN. You're using a, what, 12 millimeter size rope here? Yeah, half inch. So um, this might desheath it higher. And uh, the Purcell Prusiks, when I tested those, I did not test them in an ascender context. Um, basically, it does it does load limit, but uh, I don't know if it's enough to uh, to not desheath it. So we'll, we'll find out. Science. Uh, science. Give us a demonstration of what a scenario would be uh, if you had to pass the knot in the situation you'd be best practice for rescue is a two rope system at all times and so we would be climbing what we would consider our main line if you will mm -hmm. uh, full body weight and we would have a separate rope hanging that we were chasing a belay device on whether it's an asap lock or a vt prusik or any number of other devices so we don't have that here today again we're testing worst case scenario where either you didn't have that device in a position to catch you or you just neglected to put it in the system at all because you thought a single rope technique based upon your experience is gonna work out just fine. One point of order, again, when we're doing rescue, two rope system and a class three harness. My class three harness is on DECA right now, so I'm just gonna wear a climbing <laughs> harness, uh, a helmet, obviously. So for those of you watching saying that's not exactly how they would do it in rescue, you are 100% right. <laughs> Boy, who's, wait, wait. whose helmet is that? Deckers. <laughs> There's a thousand ways to ascend. Everybody knows that. This is one that we teach firefighters pretty commonly. When we get a class of 24, we have to come up with a system where 24 people can hop onto the system and manipulate it without a lot of fine tweaks. So we have our top ascender. It's attached right now to my waist. Really common, it would go to the chest to help people keep, keep a vertical orientation. Uh, if you are fit enough, I like to have it attached to my waist because then I can articulate my body. If I attach it high, uh, then that limits that. It's on an adjustable lanyard that we can extend and contract based upon arm length and some other factors. On my lower ascender, I've got my atria, um, just one right now, you could absolutely have two, and I have my Purcell. So the primary objective of this Purcell is so that I can't drop this lower ascender when I take it off to jump the knot. But it does serve to a certain degree as a backup in case while I'm detached from my top ascender, if I were to fall and my belay did not actuate, then I'm gonna land on this Purcell. And that's what we're here to test. So you never actually wait this because it is your bottom ascender. You're waiting this guy the whole time. Mm -hmm. But while you take that off, right. you're only standing in your atria. Correct, yeah, thereby imparting the slack. Mm -hmm. so you're stepping up high to reach across the obstruction. That's where you could come up with a, a fact or something. Most of the time you're at a pretty low fall factor yeah um because you're going to be below this point unless you're high stepping so it's a pretty yeah. safe system with the exception of that one point where you got to jump the knot if you're coming up to your knot this is where people get to the point where they're going to have that potential fall factor typically i'll take a little bit of a high step right there i'm going to come up take my top ascender off jumping whatever my out the boy is and so if you're good at manipulating the senders, you'll have that potential fall factor for about one second. Firefighters are doers of many, masters of none. And so it's really common to see. And show us how not to do it. They'll take that off and they're sitting here and they're fighting it and they get tired and they're doing this. <laughs> and they are 
they're hanging out here for seconds, sometimes double digit seconds. <laughs> and occasionally they just get so exhausted that they give up and they'll lower themselves back onto that. And again, we know in a static orientation, that'll hold your body weight. Of course. What I want to know is if they <laughs> if fall you... onto that, will that thing absorb enough shock in its actuation that we don't de-sheath that rope. All right, so you don't want to do that. Who's going to do that for us? Decker. Back up there. Decker had an accident in our previous videos, so he's a couple pounds lighter. And because he's a couple pounds lighter, <laughs> we decided to make him a couple pounds heavier where it counts. We're going to use this snap shackle to attach directly to the ascender. So Buster's weight will be on the ascender. So this is mimicking his foot being in the HRA full weight on the ascender. And then uh, when we release this, he's going to shock load onto the ascender. And our Prusel is fully collapsed at this point. So it should be able to go up and absorb some of the fall. Line scale three. Okay. So the modes we've got now is peak mode is on and uh, log is we'll on. zero that out. 75 pounds minus the arm and <laughs> plus 75 pounds. So yeah, yeah, about 150-ish uh, 150 150. pounds. So we're using the back of the drop tower to connect our electric capstan winch, which is how we haul a lot of things up. But we don't want a bunch of rope in the system and then going down because this rope diagonally might absorb some of the fall. So we're actually, uh, we threw a butterfly knot back into this rope. We're gonna put the pulley a little bit higher, about right there, and then connect the butterfly knot to there, which is how a rope would normally be. It'd be terminated above you. And you might not even have that much rope in the system. We don't want this rope to absorb the fall. We wanna find it, find out if the Purcell does the absorption. Ready, Decker? <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh, the Purcell slipped a bit and it did not de-sheath the rope. So you can see that the butterfly knot is right there. So you only have two meters between the uh, cinder and the knot. Obviously, if you had 150 feet out, you'd have way more absorption than in this little... Everything in the system is going to absorb something. Man, Decker, you really carry a lot. This is our capstan winch, uh, 13 millimeter maximum. <laughs> and I would say this is pretty close to the maximum at half inch or so. It barely fit in there. We wrap it around as many times as we can, which is three. The cool thing about this is once you release tension, you can basically lay him back down. <laughs> These do have a tendency to get wrapped over themselves though. Yeah. Oh, look at Decker. Oh, it does feel a little glazed right here. It slipped from basically here to here, and you can definitely feel the glazing where it kind of melted that outer sheath. Wow, 4.1 kilonews. That's about a thousand pounds of force. So we just took the ascender off, and you can see it's a little bit flatter right there where the ascender was camming into the rope. Man, this sheath has got to be just massive. You guys use massive ropes. Yeah, so uh, we kind of abide by the NFPA standards. NFPA uh, figures that firefighters are heavy. They call each firefighter 300 pounds dumb. They think that we're going to run our ropes over sharp edges and shock load the shit out of them all the time. <laughs> so I went to reset this, and I noticed that it's melted together. <laughs> um, and I don't... I don't think it'll slide. I think every you gotta keep you gotta keep undoing it. Yeah, component got hot enough that it melted together. Is that really that fused? Yeah. Wow. I would retire it at this point. I still wouldn't want to do that. No, no, no. This is definitely Plan C or D. Oh, we got some more Isaacs. 5.18's more than last time. What's the condition of our rope? Yeah, it's a uh, flat. You got a little flat, like it's squished. But should we try this with uh, my eight mil static rope? And it's welded. Very much so. 
Oh, it did not desheath it. Ah, how boring. That per cell had not been reset. So it, it stretched further. So it, it came unmelted and then melted in another spot. But it didn't go all the way to the quick link. So 5.36 from those few data points, it looks like our Purcell, uh, which is really getting wrecked, uh, is absorbing less force than the initial fall. That five kilonewtons was not enough to desheath this rope in this scenario. Um, it is not, not as pretty as it used to be, but it does, does not look compromised. I mean, that, that would pass an inspection. I'm actually really impressed with the performance of these um, in terms of it's jacked for sure, but it did its job. And this is pretty skinny little uh, Purcell cord. Um, oftentimes it's, it's actually gonna be eight mil hand tied cord that we're using instead of these commercially made ones. So um, interested to see what happens when we bump up a size maybe and see if we have similar results or better. Um, would that pass inspection? No, no, no. This is a retired piece of gear at this point. Um, you know, kind of a, a sacrificial. That's why we put it in the system. We know it's kind of like a screamer. It's going to blow out, uh, do its job, and then get thrown away. So, in science, uh, it's good to have a control. And we're about halfway through this episode, and we decided to do a control. <laughs> uh, so, what we have done instead of the uh, Purcell is we have now just put a, the most static thing we could think of, which is a triple length um, Dyneema runner. And we're going to see if, just replicating all of the circumstances, if we get the rope to desheath de without the Purcell in the system absorbing shock. All right, desheath the rope, Decker. Oh, yes! Good job, buddy. That's what I use for a shock absorber, is my sheath. So in case you don't know, a rope has, a Kermantle rope has, um, a whole bunch of these inside, called the core, and the outside, the sheath. And desheathing is when you do this to it. Oh, it actually uh, started to bite down on some of these uh, fibers here. And this was done with a Dyneema sling in order to not have a Purcell. So we got five and a half, I believe, on the last one. And that's barely more than I we got on the last one. And yeah, that was on eight mil. Same, that was same, on eight same, mil. same rope. It's yeah. just, we just found the, the literal limit. So you can see that's really smashed in there, right? You can see how stiff this rope is because that sheath is really scrunched up on it like a scrunchie. Okay, are we ready? Oh, it still did not desheath that rope. And we tested how strong a cross-loaded carabiner is. <laughs> I've never had a finer descent. <laughs> a finer descent? <laughs> <laughs> so this last test, you got 5.88. It did not desheath this rope. I can't even tell where it was. This is this is a big rope. This is yeah, it's, it's firefighter rope. Early. Yep. I'm not gonna climb El Cap with this. No. Um, but we dropped it on a very static Dyneema sling, and we got 5.88 versus the fresh, unburnt, unmelted four cell something. was four. Yeah. So it wasn't that much of a load limiter, as much as your we just proved your rope was awesome. The rope is pretty awesome. This this retired rope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think um, you know number one don't fall onto an ascender at all. Build better systems so that that's not a potential. Mm -hmm. um, if you do have that potential, put in a load limiter. It obviously doesn't hurt anything yeah. and it might make it a little bit better. Well, Purcells are nice for adjustment anyway. Yeah, especially going between different body sizes in a rapid succession. But as we saw, it was dangerous to get to four or five kilonewtons on an eight mil. Right, we did de-sheath the rope on the fixed length. Now, a lead fall in the gym will put uh, three, four, five, or even six on like the, the cam, the bolt, or whatever you're falling on. But on, on me, I rarely see above two or three. So if my body is gonna see four or five anyways, I'm already gonna have right. problems. And this was a very short section of rope. 
short section of static rope. If I was to jug on a semi-static rope, which is like that eight mil, and you have a lot of it, you're only, you still got like 50 meters to go. Still like, you can you can feel it yeah. when you're ascending. Yeah, it's it stretches just not much, so. Yeah. But some cave ropes are like super, super static. And um, those have been known to desheath before if people fall on them. So it is a concern. Uh, just don't take falls on ascenders. Yeah. Good advice, right? Any other advice we have? Oh, that's right. Subscribe. Is that advice or a plea? Oh, am I supposed to plug this shirt? Buy swag? Whatever. Just end the video.